believe that we are looking to the seven generations of those unborn. We're keeping this land for them. We're keeping this river for them. We're keeping the language, we're keeping the culture. We're keeping the concept of being Menominee people, sovereign nation. That's who we are as Menominee people. And that's who we'll be into the future. Act 31 is an exciting opening to exploring our shared future as Indians and non-Indians here in Wisconsin. We went way back, it's in our own claim, as being the most archeologically rich campus in the world. It says the people who moved into the Western Great Lakes when the ice receded were the first inhabitants of the New World. So that's a pretty exciting story to think about, of when we think of the Western Great Lakes and the 11 federally recognized Indian nations of Wisconsin. And then we think about the deep human story of when people first started calling the Western Great Lakes home. One thing I think about Native nations is that there is such a strong adherence to tradition and a sense of traditional identity, cultural identity, cultural practice, and cultural ways because people have been in place for so long. These tribal identities are so tied to place that if you're still in that place, why would you ever move away from those ideas and those spiritualities and those worldviews that define you, that yourself and your ancestors. And so I think despite the United States' best efforts to have Native peoples transform away from those tribal identities, their linguistic heritage, that connection to place and the sense that our ancestors have lived and breathed in this place for so long and that their connection to place shaped who we are. It's our connection to our ancestors that keep us attached to the worldviews and the cultural heritage of this place. Act 31 is an invitation to get to know the deep human story of the Western Great Lakes. It helps us understand our neighbors. It helps us understand our own shared history and the complicated human relations of the Great Lakes. That this place has been a contested place for the entirety of its human story. Take it easy. Act 31 was born out of a pretty difficult period of misunderstanding. And it's amazing how misunderstanding can lead to such incredible conflict that spread across the entirety of the northern part of the state. And what happened is, a long time ago, when the Americans came into the Great Lakes after the War of 1812, when Americans first start learning what's in the Great Lakes, Americans have no idea what's here. They have no idea about the people, the nations, the languages of the Great Lakes. And as they come in, we make agreements for, okay, the United States can move in, a treaty. Yes, you can remain and you can keep doing what you've been doing for thousands of years or hundreds of years or however long you've been in place and the way you sustain yourself. That's great. Awesome. Fast forward 140 years later, we've completely collectively forgotten those agreements with one another. And so the spearfishing conflict or the walleye war in Wisconsin is this great case study and misunderstanding and how easily it is to forget the agreements we make with one another, but how easily we can recapture the spirit of a shared future if we choose to. So I think Act 31 gives us a great sense of perspective, of thinking about this place, and the many different ways we understand this place. Um, and that's a skill set that will be valuable for anyone wherever they go. In this global connected world of learning to work across culture, to see different perspectives on any one different decision we have to make collectively together, I think these are skills that are beneficial for all students to learn.